Hey, it's Tom from Tom's Tunes. Today we're assembling the eight foot wide by 10 foot long bimini top from pontoonstuff.com. Marty originally taught me the vacuum trick, so I can't take all the credit for that. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, I just saw black. I just threw up too fast? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Let's talk about what comes in the box to start. We have obviously our frame uh, for each side. Keep in mind as you lay this out that our bracket that holds the quarter inch and a quarter tube that lays on top. This is going to be our port side because this goes forward. Likewise, from this side, this bracket that rests on top, this will face forward as well for the starboard side. So keep that in mind as you lay everything out. Then we have our bows, our cross pieces. Those are all attached to hold the two sides together. And then we'll get into our hardware package. So this, these tubes, they're gonna have a spring button. These are gonna be installed to put the bows and the sides together and then they'll never come out, essentially. We also have a hardware bag that gives you wiring to run your electrical for your stern light on top. You've got bolts and nylock nuts and then some uh, electrical connections. So keep that in mind as well. And then these are what we're actually gonna start with installing first. These are our risen uh, supports, our risen brackets that are gonna hold the bimini top to the railing. The reason that they're risen, and you'll see when we put them on, they're gonna sit on the railing here, but this is gonna get you up high enough to where you're above the seat back. So when the pin goes in, you don't have to worry about any rubbing on your seat back. It also makes using the bimini quick and easy when you're out on the boat. Let's start here, and then we'll come back to assembling the frame itself. Per the instructions, when you're installing your brackets, they're gonna hold the bimini top on the railings. We're gonna have a center point, and then from that center bracket, we're gonna go back 36 inches for our rear support, and then forward 38 inches from or for our front support. Let's space everything out to make sure it's gonna work on a railing, to make sure there's no doors interfering or anything like that. This bracket is about two and a half inches, so I need 76 and a half inches, roughly, in order to make this bimini top work. This boat has a stern entry, so this railing stays straight, and then it curves into that door, that entry. We're gonna keep it on that straight part of the panel. It's the only way to make it work. And I've got plenty of room on this side to go to 76 and a half inches. If I look here, if I were to come forward that 36, our center bracket's gonna be roughly here. I like the spacing on that and everything. We're gonna go look at the other side because that's where the door is on this boat. To make sure that your measurements are even on both sides, we're gonna use a seam of panels where two railings come together as a point of reference. We're over on the port side of the boat and that's where this door is. So we have to take that into account. There's no way to really do this bimini top without it interfering a little bit with the door. That's just a quick duck under to get on and off the boat if the bimini's up. And there is the front door too, and the stern entry. What I have to make sure is that where I put my center bracket, I'm not gonna interfere with this door. I know that from the rear, I need 36 inches from the end of the bracket back. So the bracket here is actually gonna go very close to the door. Then we can measure our 36 inches back, and then our 38 inches forward is gonna clear this doorway by quite a bit. So we have plenty of room to do it. It's gonna be a little bit different just because there's a door on this side and not the other, but there's always a way to make it work. Using the seams and measuring on each side, we've determined that we're gonna be 10 and a half inches forward of this seam here for our center bracket. That leaves us 36 inches back and plenty of space forward to go 38 inches forward. Let's talk tools. What you're gonna to need to do this installation is a drill with a quarter inch drill bit. The longer the bit, the better. A 7 16th either this is a ratcheting wrench or a socket would work too. Phillips head screwdriver, ideally a number two or three, just holding in position while we tighten the nylock nut. That's it, and a tape measure to measure everything six times before you drill your first hole. So resting my bracket in place, I'm gonna line up with that seam of the two panels. And then with my drill, I'm gonna come down, and this isn't long enough to drill a hole, but I'm just gonna mark where I'm putting my hole and then I can go all the way through the top and the bottom of the railing. Got 
got my bracket, my hole is drilled. I'm gonna take my bolt, run that down through, then I can set that into position, just lining my bolt up all the way through the railings. And there's not gonna be a whole lot sticking out on the bottom. So we've got just a little bit of that bolt sticking out on the bottom. Take my nylock nut, run it up, and then from the top side, I'm gonna take my screwdriver down. Again, just holding this uh, Phillips head bolt in place, and then I'll tighten from the bottom side. Snug that up. Now I've got my center bracket on the starboard side in place. I'm gonna go over and do the same on my port side because this now gives me my point to measure back 36 inches and forward 38 inches. We have our center supports in place. We're gonna work back and then forward. So again, 36 inches back will be the point for my next one. Now when I'm measuring, I can take my Sharpie, go back 36 inches, I'll make a little mark. And when I put my next bracket on, it'll just barely cover that mark, and that way I know I'm in the right position. We're gonna do the same thing going forward to our front brackets as we did going back. This time we're measuring 38 inches forward. Make my mark at 38 inches from the front of the bracket. We'll do the same on this side. Now I'm gonna repeat the same steps I did to mount those, drilling my hole, then bolting through on the front and back supports. If you're working around your new seats or if you're installing this next to old seats, Put a buffer here for where you're drilling so you don't run down and rub your seats and leave a mark. And a friendly tip, never set this up or on a seat. Lay it down on the floor of your boat. Don't go ruining your new floor or your new seats. want your bimini top to lay in a very particular spot when you lay it back you might set the frame up first just to see where it's going to lay and that way you can set your center support on this one we knew it was about getting as far back as possible taking our door into account so that can play a little bit different but now you've seen how the brackets are installed we're going to get to installing or assembling the frame and the bimini top and then we'll put it on the brackets i know i'm going on the starboard side kind of next to the console for my wiring so with that wiring included, I'm gonna start by taking my farthest back bow, and I can run my wire right through that before I do anything else. So what I'm gonna do is just tie a little knot in the very end of it. I can pull the rest of the slack through, and I'm just gonna feed my wire right through before installing this. Doing this before makes this whole project a lot easier when it comes to the electrical. I can then slide this into position. Then we're going to use the vacuum trick to pull this wire through my frame all the way out the bottom. So I go in the back, the, the farthest back frame piece. Before I do that, I'm going to tie a little piece of plastic or tape a little piece of plastic on here so I can vacuum it through. I'll feed it in as far as I can. Then we'll fire up the vacuum, seal it off, and let it pull the rest of the way. We've got our wire pulled through the farthest back tube, which is essentially our center bow connection point. That snaps together when both spring buttons are pushed up through, we know we're connected. I'm gonna go ahead and continue assembling these tubes with the spring buttons and our bows, and we'll get the whole frame put together. We use a heat shrink tubing on this, that way we get it all nice and waterproof. 
on an LED, like the pontoon stuff, stern light, you'll have a red and a black wire that will correspond to your power and ground. Red being power, black being ground. Now we're ready to put some canvas on. When you unpackage your bimini, you're gonna have your canvas top and you're gonna have a boot. So our boot is our protective cover. And then our top is gonna to come with some snaps. So these will be screwed into the frame once we get on the boat and we get those in position. So we'll start in the back by sliding our navigation light through, our stern light through. We're gonna go ahead and stand it right up. Now with the back on, I can work my way forward, putting the zippers across the rest of the bows. When you put the boot on, the same rules apply. There's a hole for the light. Start by sliding that into position. Slide the canvas of the bimini, just bunch it up into the boot, and then you can zip it shut. We've got our frame together, our boot on, canvas on. We're gonna go put on the boat. We are up on the boat now. We're gonna stand this into its 45 degree position or halfway up position. So this is the halfway position. If you're cruising, you want sun. I don't recommend, I don't personally trailer with it in this position unless I have very, very short route to go and no speedy roads. But this is where it can rest and hang out. It's out of the way, it's tucked away, and our canvas is protected by our boot. To extend it, I'm gonna unzip my boot. Then I can extend everything forward. In order to do that, I grab an arm, and all I need to do is walk forward with it. And what you'll find on the front and the back are these push button springs. So push springs, if I push on the top, it's going to make my bottom springs go into the tube. That allows me to set it into position on our mounting bracket. Let's talk about these clips. These are in position, they're movable, but these are gonna help everything rest together nicely in place. I'm just gonna use a self-tapping screw to put that into position. A rivet would work here too. Some of them are already riveted in. This one we know the position it's gonna stay in, but this may be adjusted. Onto our snaps. I'm gonna get my bimini top as centered as possible, just eyeballing it. And then when it comes to putting these snaps in position, I can measure and make a mark that's even. But I wanna make sure that I'm relatively even front to back in terms of where the canvas is sitting. On this bow, we're actually gonna wrap our strap around and come on top of the metal. So I'll make a mark there, I'll put my button in, everything looks nice and even. And we'll do the same thing in the back with those straps. If you are using the pontoonstuff.com wiring harness, you'll have a blue and gray wire. That's gonna be your stern light power and a black wire that's combined with it. That's your ground. You may run this up through the railing, through the floor. In this case, we're actually gonna sneak it right out the side of the console and run our wiring here. But what I'm gonna do in between our bimini top and the console is put a couple quick connectors and that's our eight foot wide by 10 foot long bimini. Lots of coverage, lots of shade for your passengers and yourself. And easy to assemble, put up and put down on the water by yourself. Please like and subscribe to these videos and comment below if you have questions about doing something on your own boat.